Today's video is brought to you by Luster. So a couple months ago, my good pal Brian over at BPS Customs pointed out that despite the fact that I produce video content full time for a living and I'm a PC enthusiast, I've never worked off of or used a proper workstation PC. He's a sharp guy too, says a lot of big brain, high IQ stuff like I'd give anything to be as handsome and as charismatic as you. Could you FedEx me some of your most recent gym clothes before you wash them? My wife constantly reminds me that she married the wrong Brian. You know, regular stuff like that. So after he recommended a Threadripper build, my friends over at AMD and Gigabyte Aorus offered to help me make that a reality and I happily accepted. And it's, well, it's an absolute beast. Told you so, man. You ready? Let's go! Yo, I'm Brian P, you're watching Bad C Tech, and today we're building an all new editing rig featuring the Threadripper 3960X from AMD and a slew of top end components from Gigabyte Aorus. Full transparency, all the parts you see today except for the case and the GPU were provided by AMD and Gigabyte. So since the move, I've been doing all my editing on a Ryzen 3900X system and my aging 8700K system has basically been relegated to being a modern warfare machine and testing only. The 3900X does a pretty solid job in Premiere Pro, but as the quality and size of my footage increases, it can put a strain on that editing rig. 10-bit 422 ProRes footage, even in an MOV container, can be pretty demanding for your system. So I wanted to build a dedicated editor that would be able to tackle that workload with no issue. CPU today is the 3960X Threadripper from AMD. It's 24 cores, 48 threads, retails for right about 1350 in the US, making this the most powerful and most expensive CPU I've owned by a landslide. Motherboard's the Gigabyte TRX 40Rs Extreme, retailing for $849.99 US. This thing is about as overbuilt as a motherboard can get. Big thermal armor plate on the back, permanently attached I.O., seven type A USB 3.2 ports, USB-C 3.2, dual Intel 10 gig ethernet ports, onboard Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth, quad channel ECC support, a crazy power delivery and VRM system, not to mention most of the major connections are flush with the edge of the board. Since it supports PCIe 4.0 for the M.2, it also has this breakout card that can house four of these 4.0 M.2 devices Devices, supports RAID configs. To call this board an absolute beast still doesn't feel like I'm doing it justice. Between my rigs, I now have a few different RS drives that take advantage of PCIe 4.0. It's generally a good idea in an editing rig to have a nice spread of drives. One where like your programs and your OS live, another one where you handle all your incoming media, one you render to, one that handles your cache. It's pretty nice. But for simplicity's sake for today, we're gonna start with a single two terabyte NVMe PCIe 4.0 or a strife. The included copper housing on these drives looks absolutely sick, but in this build, we will ultimately have to take it out of this copper housing, unfortunately. You have four different M.2 slots on the motherboard itself and an additional four on the included breakout card. Now, the reason why we can't keep it in its copper housing is that with all the thermal armor in place, there's simply no room. This holds true on the breakout card as well, but there you have like this 5.5 millimeter copper block, as well as an additional fan for cooling. The only mildly annoying thing here is that the backing for all the thermal pads are connected, which means you'll have to cut it if you're not gonna populate the whole card at once. As we have just the one drive dedicated to this build at the moment until I get all my other drives sorted out, we are going to mount this on the motherboard and skip the breakout card for now. Normally I'd use this slot here as it's away from the GPU and any additional PCIe card-based drives I have. There's a trade-off here though, is this is the only slot on the board that shares lanes. So you will lose four of the available eight SATA ports if you go this way. It won't affect me for the purposes of this build, so it's a non-issue, but it is worth pointing out that the other three slots on the motherboard operate independently with no connectivity trade-off whatsoever. For memory, we're going with eight sticks of eight gigabyte RSDDR4 at 3600 for a total of 64 gig. This stuff always looks great and it performs solid as well. Because Premiere now makes good use of RTX, the GPU is the 2080 Super Hybrid. I'll be bringing that over from my 3900X machine for a good apples to apples comparison for rendering speeds. To cool this monster CPU, we'll be using the RS360 AIO. It's loaded with RGB, looks really nice. I wasn't 100% sure about using an Asetek based AIO as those round cooling plates don't seem like they would cover nearly enough of the die, but we'll talk more on that in a sec. Lastly, power for this rig will come courtesy of the P750 GM 750 watt gold rated PSU from Gigabyte. Now, because this motherboard is an absolute unit, my friends over at Fractal Design helped me out 
out with the Define R7 XL case as both the R7 and the S2 Vision case I had in-house were not enough to handle this board. This build actually came together really easy. That's one of the benefits in working in an absolutely giant case and with a very full-featured motherboard. It's not that the motherboard is particularly wide, it's like an inch or so taller than a standard ATX. This particular case has a pretty robust fan controller system on board, but in the event that it didn't, it's really nice that all the fan headers are grouped together really cleanly on the edge of this motherboard. Big thanks to today's sponsor, Luster, for continuing to support the channel. You've probably seen their links down in the description of my videos, and if you haven't, you definitely should. Most people want to read or watch a review as part of their shopping process before they commit. And while I love that you watch mine, before you hand over your hard-earned money, I really encourage you to get some information from as many different sources as you can. The problem is with so much content out there, it's easy to go down that rabbit hole. And after reading and watching a lot of reviews and investing a lot of time, Sometimes you come away with more questions than answers. And that's where Luster comes in. It's a free shopping tool or Chrome extension that consolidates all that info for you by gathering it from a number of trusted places and reviewers around the internet, Wirecutter, Reddit discussions, even other YouTubers. You can search by your specific product need, your specific budget, and get a good bird's eye view of how well that product stacks up from a lot of different perspectives and voices from around the internet, not just mine. It can also alert you to sales or personalized product recommendations right on Amazon or Google, making it easy to score the best product at the best price and keep tabs on all those Black Friday sales this year since most of our shopping will be done online. Luster is free. It's easy to use. It can save you a ton of time and money when you're looking for that perfect product. Check them out at join.luster.ai. The only issue I had in this build is that initially the far left two memory slots wouldn't recognize any memory in them at all. They would power up the RGB on the memory sticks, but they wouldn't recognize any memory in there. So I had to get on the phone to my buddy Brian again, and he had me reseat the CPU. And in doing so, I found the world's longest cat hair laid across the slot, sandwiched in between the chip and the slot. Luckily, nothing was damaged at all. Pulled it out, reseated the chip, everything came back to life. My bad. My previous editing rig was really no slouch. The 3900X is a solid performer in Premiere Pro, and that X570 motherboard I have in there from Aura's already supported PCIe 4.0, so the main performance differences between that rig and this one will be the move from 32 gig of memory to 64, as well as moving from a processor that has 12 cores, 24 threads, to one with 24 cores, 48 threads. Yikes. In the benchmarks, that performance difference definitely came through. Blender's BMW scene took the 3900X two minutes and 14 seconds, where the 3960X handled it in one minute and four seconds. Cinebench saw 6636 on the Ryzen and 13612 on the Threadripper. In Handbrake, the 3900X took approximately eight minutes, 24 seconds to transcode a 12 minute 4K MP4 to a 1080 M4V. The 3960 took five minutes, 58 seconds to manage that same job. Time Spy Extreme, the CPU only score was 6290 versus 10,928. In terms of real world, I use the Adobe Suite for all of my professional work. I would be interested someday in giving Resolve a go, but for right now, the idea of learning a new NLE slows me down too much when I've been on Premiere for the past five years. Premiere has made some great strides over the past years in terms of harnessing more of your available hardware so render times were already low enough to hardly be a factor, like honestly a fraction of what they used to be a couple years back. Nonetheless, time is money. Using an 11.5 minute 4K timeline with my usual bevy of effects, transitions, and overlays, I tested this two ways. CPU only, i.e. not taking advantage of the GPU hardware acceleration, the 3900X yielded 12 minutes and 12 seconds, while the 3960 tackled the same task in seven minutes 39 seconds. Using the GPU, which is more real world use case for me, we saw seven minutes, 44 seconds on the 3900X machine and just barely, barely under six minutes on the 3960X. Very impressive. I don't do a lot of big transcode jobs anymore, even though this processor would handle them with no problem at all, as I'm using some beefier acquisition codecs, both from the Ninja V and like the 10-bit 422 MOV codec off the GH5S, as opposed to transcoding to an intermediary like Cineform. I've also just never got used to using proxies. It just has never been a workflow I've been comfortable with. Using some of this new footage though is when I started to have problems. The 8700K machine just could not hack it at all. And the 3900X machine still struggled a little bit on certain things. This was seen both in timeline scrubbing and in playing back the program window full res. I am very happy to report though that the 3960X build 
absolutely chews through this footage. While I won't be gaming and streaming on this machine, it should be pretty obvious that this army of cores can handle simultaneous tasks like that, no sweat. This will also finally let me use more of After Effects alongside Premiere, as before, certain animations and effects were enough of a drag for me to avoid using them completely. I wound up doing nearly 100% of things inside Premiere only. Overclocking is not something I'm gonna try to shoehorn into this video today, because one, properly overclocking Threadripper is like an art form compared to my rudimentary grasp of simple tweaks to multipliers and voltage. And two, the Aorus 360 AIO handles the stock performance just fine, but I worry about having the overhead to push voltage on this chip. Even in a 10 minute A to 64 burn test, the 360 AIO held the chip to a max of 90 degrees Celsius, where this chip doesn't start to throttle until 95. So while the Threadripper might not be the best application for an Asa Tech design like this, I was still very impressed with the performance and looks, if I'm being honest, temps during real world stuff like a render never crept above like 76. Even the majority of the benchmarks we saw saw it hitting right at like 80. I think for any consumer chip, like the new upcoming Ryzen chips, this thing will handle anything you'd want to throw at it. So to say I'm pleased with the performance of this build would be a colossal understatement. This definitely goes down in the books. It's something I should have done a long time ago. This is, uh, I guess, uh, one of the more difficult conversations I've ever really had to have, but um... Uh, I, I, I told you so, so, uh, you know, suck it. I love that guy. This creates a really strong base system I can build around for a while. The TRX-40 Extreme is ridiculously equipped, as it should be at that price point, but there's a ton of future-proofing here. I'll absolutely be dropping the money to populate this expansion card with SSDs, and though I thought I'd immediately be looking at a memory upgrade to 128 gig, I don't think we're there yet, unless you're doing 8K footage or 3D jobs. While I was rubbing the ceiling of the 32 gig in the old machine, many of my projects are between the 20, 25 gig range with the rest dedicated to system stuff. So that gives me plenty of overhead in this new machine for After Effects work. I can't thank Gigabyte and AMD enough for making this a reality for me. And I gotta give a quick shout out to Fractal Design for coming through so fast with a case to help me house this beast. Gigabyte's a brand, I use their motherboards on my builds for years. I didn't choose any other brand. Years ago, when I started my YouTube channel, they were a brand that I really aspired to be able to work with someday, so I get a little geeked out now that they're such valued partners of the channel. As always, affiliate links down in the description for everything that we talked about today. Any questions, hit me in the comments or drop by the Discord. And that's it for this time. I'm Brian P. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button, hit that sub button, and until next time, stay up. Yeah, so like I was talking to him the other day, and uh, he was like, "Oh, no, I know what I'm talking about. You, you're dumb." And I'm like, "I'm like, man, you probably trust me on this one." And he's like, "He's like, no, no, why would I do that? You're so stupid." And then I was like, mm, "I don't know about that." And then like a week later, I was like, "You know what, bro? I told you so." Ugh, what a dick.